Hey, this is James Hall, editor of Bassmaster Magazine. And Chris Horton, the conservation director for Bass. And Dave Jones, staff writer for Bass Publications. Uh, we appreciate you all joining us for this slideshow of our Bass Slam Trek, where uh, we attempted to catch all eight species of bass in five days. Uh, not and, recommended, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. On paper, it sounded great. In practice, not so much. But we did travel over uh, 3,100 miles to get her done. Uh, and it all started right here in Florida, uh, just down the street from where we all live at a small 20-acre lake uh, that we thought we would be able to go in there, catch our Florida, no problem. We needed a 16-incher and caught a ton of those. <laughs> I mean, a ton, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we uh, we had fun uh, catching them. That, that was not the issue, but we wanted to get on the, on the road to get to the next spot. So, uh, that 16-inch fish, man, it, it kind of eluded us for a while, um, but eventually uh, we, we, we found a little area that had good grass and one big one finally bit, got one over 16 inches there, uh, wiped the sweat off our brow, and headed to the uh, Santa Fe River. In the Santa Fe, I tell you what, was probably one of the prettiest areas I think I've ever fished. A uh, very picturesque setting with the Spanish moss and grape oak trees and cypress trees along the water's edge. And a buddy of mine had turned, turned me on to this from the University of uh, uh, Florida. And uh, he told me that you wouldn't go 100 yards downstream and, before you catch the first swanee. And uh, That's true. You know, he was absolutely right. Uh, and uh, the first fish we caught in about the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe. And then after that, we caught several more and uh, just relaxed and enjoyed the scene, uh, scenery. And... Uh, then packed up and headed on for the next one. Uh, where we headed to was in Georgia. We headed to a tributary of the Flint River, stopped in there at Fred's. It's a pretty cool little shop. And what we were after was a shoal bass. Shoal bass, it was pretty slow, but it was a lot of fun uh, navigating that river. I mean, you get one, maybe two casts in, then you got to paddle elsewhere. Uh, it, we're just all over the place. Negotiated trees, what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. We got yeah. up the next day, and then we started catching fish. Yeah, and the fish were good. I mean, these fish, the shoal bass are gorgeous fish, yeah, man. Not only is the habitat pretty, but the fish itself is so cool compared to a lot of the other uh, uh, bass that I've caught. Yeah. And one thing about the shoal bass is they don't hang out where other, other bass did. Now, we were kind of fishing a lowland river here, but when we got to the actual shoals, you want to fish the most, the swiftest flowing water you can find at the head of these runs and riffles. Yeah, and this and this area right here ended up uh, being pretty productive for us. And man, I was I was amazed. You you throw right into the heart of that current. There seemed to be uh, no water too fast for a shoal bass to exist. And they're really fun when you hook them up in that, that swift water mm -hmm. too. Cause I know how to use the current? Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially using light tackle. But it, you know, just a very very scenic place. Uh, to fish, and I uh, highly recommend going after shoal bass anytime. Well, after the shoal, it was on to the red iron spot, but uh, somebody uh, had to keep these guys in line, so I had to take a nap. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it was on to the Talapusa <laughs> for a chance at uh, spotted bass and uh, hopefully a red eye. And uh, we're fishing here below uh, Martin Dam on the, on the uh, Talapusa River, and we, as you can see, we're waiting. And for those out there that are considering waiting below a dam, uh, word of advice, pay attention to the water levels. That's uh, enough said. <laughs> yes, uh, al alarms are there for a reason, so listen. Uh, but uh, anyway, we managed to catch some great uh, great spotted bass. Uh, unfortunately, we set the bar a little too high at 12 inches for the red eye. Although we caught, uh, I think, three red eye total, they were all fairly small. And red eye are really a small stream specialist, so they're always going to be pretty small. Yeah, but, for, you know, it, it, with our tails between our legs, we slid uh, up to... Um, northern Alabama to fish the Flint River there, and I mean slid <laughs> all the way down to it. And once we got in the water, we slid a couple of times as well. But man, that little Flint River uh, outside of Huntsville is absolutely gorgeous. You can see we're uh, oftentimes wading only ankle deep and catching fish. Uh, fish like this, that's a, that's a nice representation of, uh, mm -hmm. of what that little river has to you offer. You think fish like that would be in there, but being shallow and real narrow. It's Inside the Huntsville city limits, I mean, it's it's a beautiful area. Yeah, it yeah. is, and, and not only were we catching smallmouth, but we caught some nice northern largemouth and, uh, and some, some I think some little spots as well. Yep. Just mm -hmm. a very, very picturesque little place. We did not one leave. Um, yeah, it's a welcome change from being in Florida too. It's 75 <laughs> exactly. in the shade all day. That yeah, and I, I lost one crock on the Tallapoosa, and then I, I blew out a flip-flop on the, on the Flint, so I had the rest of the trip with two different yeah. shoes on. After the Flint, we made the long haul over to Texas. and I mean, fish long. <laughs> yeah, real long. Lady Bird Lake, uh, right outside of Austin. I mean, I was Austin there. And we launched at about 10.30 in the morning, about 9 o'clock, and then within 30 minutes I had that one that uh, counted. 
James was catching them on. Yeah, I was using a little flick shape type thing up right against those bridge, bridge pilings. pilings. It was, uh, and it was a gorgeous lake for more than one reason, I guess. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think the University of Texas <laughs> rowing team was uh, having a little practice there. Yes. Yeah, so then from there, we went to the Guadalupe. And uh, upon arriving at the Guadalupe River below Canyon Dam, I was a little bit concerned when I saw the color of the water. It was really kind of a milky green, which means the fish were going to be washed out. And unfortunately, you really need good colored fish in order to tell the difference between the Guadalupe and potentially a smallmouth or a smallmouth and Guadalupe hybrid. So uh, anyway, we launched and uh, proceeded to fish for the next oh, several hours. I wish I didn't hours. do that. <laughs> that, that thing <laughs> you, you, you find a, <laughs> Always find a dead armadillo in Texas. <laughs> but uh, we, we managed to catch three fish that we thought could be potential Guadalupes, but we were a little bit concerned they might be hybrids with smallmouth. Uh, so as soon as we got back, we uh, called Texas Parks and Wildlife and uh, sent them some photos and said, can you help us? Did we really for sure catch a Guadalupe? And out of those three, two of them were hybrids. One of them was a Guadalupe. And that was a nice uh, northern largemouth there. And what a, what a beautiful place that Guadalupe River is. A very popular destination for Texans to tube down. But, man, it is a super little fishery as well. Definitely. Absolutely. And uh, that left us pretty wiped out after that day on the river. <laughs> yeah. It was a long trek back home. <laughs> Not before in Austin didn't help much. <laughs> anyway, I tell you, that, that five-day trip, catching all those uh, different species of bass, is something I will never forget. Yeah, it was a really awesome experience, and uh, diversity of habitat was just incredible. But uh, don't don't push yourself to do it in five days or even a week. Take take your time and enjoy the surroundings. Yeah, do it piece by piece, or you can try it all at once. But it was it's definitely worth a shot. A lot of fun. A lot of great memories. Hope to do it again. Absolutely.